Hello, good evening. After the beautiful concert of Daniel Garcia Diego, I have him here next to me on the stage of the famous Café Berlin in Madrid. Dani, how do you feel? Great. I mean, now with the energy and the clouds. Uh, yeah, we had a blast. Uh, you know, these are difficult times. and Each concert is a gift of the life. So, so we really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You once uh, said that um, uh, flamenco and jazz are brothers. Yes. Can you tell us a bit why they are brothers? What is the similarities and perhaps the differences? Yeah, I mean, uh, they have common uh, common things in terms of, of, you know, both of them are music that comes out of struggle, people that is struggling. And, and only that makes uh, a lot of connections between, between those kinds of music because is music made for sort of, uh, of you know, crying? Is, is music made for, mm, for, you know, taking out all the sorrows and all the, you know, difficulties of life? So, so in that sense, uh, they have a lot of things in common in terms of energy and, you know, the, the, the place that from that music comes from here, you know? Uh, of course, there are very, very different uh, in terms of aesthetics, uh, but you know, having that common ground uh, is kind of easier to find the ways of you know so they, putting so they them together. Yeah. So yeah. they share a soul, you mean? It's yes, sort of it's difficult to put it in words because yeah. it's, it's not something that is very specific. But mm -hmm. it, it has to do with the with you know with the message of the music. Mm -hmm. So so that is. That is very important, yeah. and, and, and you know, I think I think it's a it's a very interesting path to you know to to walk. Yeah, because that's what we've heard tonight in your in the presentation of your CD uh, Travesuras. Yeah. Of, for which you have taken uh, on the stage um, Renier Elizardo El Negron uh -huh. and um, Michael, Michael Ol Oliveira, who are two great Cuban um, musicians. So there there's an interplay between flamenco jazz and cuban percussion um i was when i asked you about uh, what flamenco and jazz have in common i was i was more thinking of the of the codes because i always feel that flamenco is oh, playing with structures and codes in the same way like jazz is that also true well it has common things too uh but you know flamenco is a lot of of, of you know falsetas which is kind of a you know, closed little compositions that, that you play one after another. And jazz is more about improvisation in, in the spot. And, you know, uh, what Rainier and Michael uh, bring to the to the trio is absolutely another completely different uh, traditional thing from Cuba, all the Cuban music that adds a lot of flavors and a lot of, you know, different shapes to the music. So at the end, and, in, and because of my, my you know my my ground too, which is very classical in the way that I I practice. I studied classical music too, apart from jazz and flamenco, of course. So you know, there's a, a lot of different things in this melting pot, and you know, uh, what we try to find is to you know blend it really and not doing kind of a patchwork. Now I play jazz, now I play flamenco, now I play Cuban music. No, no, everything is all the time uh, taking part uh, at the same time. So we, we, we like to do it that way. Mm -hmm. So is it true that um, flamenco is not so improvised as you, as we perhaps might think, and that jazz is even is more improvised if, if we talk about playing with rhythmical structures yeah. and codes? I mean, it's difficult to generalize because because it really depends on which musician are you talking about. So or, yeah. So so, but I mean, uh, with the risk of 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 you know drawing very very wide lines, uh, I would say that flamenco uh, is is more predictable in the sense that uh, you have you have played or you have seeing the things you play or sing before doing it on stage. You have practiced that. Then you change the order in the, or the way you do it. You change different little things here and there. But but you have practiced that before, you know? Uh, 
uh, in jazz, there's a lot of practicing, but the way I like to, to, to look at jazz is just jump into the void mm. and see what happens. For doing that successfully, you have to practice a lot, but in a very different way. So you have to, to mm. you know, to gather a lot of information for yourself and be very generous with your with your bandmates and you know. Uh, but it's it's kind of a different thing. So the, the thing we are trying to do with this trio is 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 taking the flamenco language and bringing bringing it to this freedom that jazz provides in the sense of improvisation. I want, my goal is, is to improvise with a truly real flamenco jazz language, uh, which is something that I've been looking for and still I'm looking for. So, so I mean, that's, that's a, uh, a goal that I have and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a lifetime thing, so. Mm -hmm. And your, your um, uh, CD is called Travesuras? Yeah. Why, what does it mean? Well, it's it's a very dif uh, difficult word to translate to English. It's this kind of uh, misbehavior that little kids have uh, sometimes that when, when they eat too much chocolate or they draw the walls at home, those things are travesuras, are little misbehaviors from the kids. Misbehaviors. Misbehaviors, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I kind of like that word because it means it, it, it means some kind of innocence. You are doing something that is not good, but you are doing it in an, in an innocent way. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you don't have bad feelings about that, you know? And out of those things can, can come really beautiful things. Uh, so, so that's why I chose that word. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I imagine my music being a, a little bit like that. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you said you, you studied classical piano? Yes. So, but now you have um, uh, make, made a, a, a jump or a leap to other musical worlds. Uh, what kind of music do you listen to? What kind of piano mm. players do you listen to when you are alone and when you are... What, what would you take with you on a deserted island? Wow, for that's a very difficult <laughs> question because, I mean, I consider myself a lover of, of, of music in general. So mm. I, I don't really like uh, to label the music. I think that is very narrow, very, you know, short-minded. I think music is much more B than ourselves. Mm -hmm. So. I understand why we label music, we put them in little boxes, but I see music as a, as a continuum. Uh, so so I, what I try is, is to, to, you know, to embrace as, ma as much music as I, I'm able to, and put, I mean, put that when, in my playing, so. But what piano player? Uh, is, is, uh, has been I, a big inspiration for you. I listen to classical pianists, uh, but of course I listen to jazz pianists. But which ones? Like 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 uh, like all the classics, like Bill Evans or or mm -hmm. Bud Powell. But of course Brad Meldau is one of my all-time favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays uh, I'm freaking out with uh, with Tigran Hamasian. Oh yeah. Uh, I like of course uh, people like Aaron Parks or Shai mm -hmm. Maestro. Uh, I, of course, uh, like Keith Jarrett uh, or Herbie Hancock, so mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's plenty of yeah, masters yeah. Mm -hmm. out there. So, so if you would go to a deserted island, you would have an enormous pile of music Yeah, and, uh, it will probably, n it, it wouldn't be piano music, maybe, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a lot of music out yeah. there. And uh, you can learn from from all of them. So mm -hmm. I consider myself a very eclectic musician, mm -hmm. and I like it that way. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, it's very, very, very uh, emotional also to feel music again, live. This I the mean, vibes yeah. of real music. I was just thinking, oh, wow, yeah, it's so think, long I time think ago. It's, it's easy to forget what music brings, what live music brings to our yeah. lives. Uh, these are these are not uh, easy times to live, uh, and I think music brings a lot of good things. Uh, not only for the moment you are listening to the concert, but for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of remembers you what's the meaning of life, what's yeah. what's the meaning of you know being alive, waking up all, all, every morning, and and you know uh, 
it's it's a joy. It's it, music brings so many things. Joy. It brings thinking. It, it brings feelings. It brings it, it brings uh, uh, it makes you think. It makes you feel the beauty of music, and those are mo some of the most beautiful things in yeah. life. Yeah, you during the concert so. you said is this is healing. It Absolutely. has a I total mean, cathartic effect. Eh? Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely, and uh, I hope for the for the yeah. crowd too. I mean, yeah. is we really need this this kind of yeah. ways of expression and and I always tell the the crowd this is not about what's happening on the stage mm -hmm. what's happening on the stage is 50% is 50 of the equation yeah the other half belongs to the crowd to the audience yeah so we we we, we really uh, play with their energy they we, we we receive energy from the crowd we we translate it yeah. to music. We transform it to music, and we give it back to the to, exactly. the to the audience. So it's this kind of virtual circle that is happening. That's why every every and each concert is so different. It depends a lot on on, on the energy that the people exactly. bring. But that is also so. something which has jazz and, and flamenco in common because there is no musical form that I know that ha is so dependent on the oles from the public as flamenco Absolutely, the communication yeah. between and those oles are like fuel you know it's like it's like uh you need to hear that in order to keep going you exactly. know so that it's this kind of circle that yeah. is going on that that yeah that, that's a yeah. very good point flamenco yeah. and jazz have these things yeah. in common yeah. we, you, you you need yeah. the energy from the yeah. from the audience to keep going you yeah. know i would love to speak to talk to you longer, but we are in Madrid and the Toca de Queda is yeah. uh, approaching. We have to leave <laughs> the club. Sadly, sadly. <laughs> sadly. Uh, I would like to thank you so much for your music. And thank you so much, also, Ernestina. Daniel will be back um, in our live Flamenco Biennale in November 2021, so everybody can hear him uh, live with his trio. Um, this was the second evening of the Jazz Double Bill, uh, live from Café Berlin uh, in Madrid. And uh, we are now preparing for the next weekend, the um, uh, 5th, 6th and 7th, which will be focused upon dance. And we will be streaming live from the beautiful studio La Acetera, a little bit outside of Seville, from the great Madonna of contemporary flamenco, which is Rocío Molina. She will perform a special piece for us, she made specially for us with three guitarists, which is Geray Cortez, Eduardo Trasierra, and Rafael Rodriguez, El Cabeza. And the next day, we will invite there Andres Marin, Ana Morales, and Vanessa Aybar with also new sneak peeks of their um, coming, upcoming uh, creations. I wish you a very happy uh, next weekend with the Flamenco Biennale online.